Hey guys, uh, welcome to part two of our Star Trek AMT Klingon Bird of Prey in 1 to 350 scale. Uh, we left off with a primer coat after assembly and doing all the lights. Now, as you can see, I've already uh, did a little, um, I guess you could say, pre shading on it. Um, what I had is I had some light bleed uh, through that midsection that connected the two, it was kind of in between the two parts of the upper and lower hole. Uh, that was kind of glowing. Uh, it wasn't light blocked. I forgot to light block it. So I kind of go back in and spray some uh, black paint to light block that. And while I did that, I just kind of sprayed some areas uh, just so um, we might have a, might show a little bit of color modulation once we put our base coat on there. Now I did have a few light leaks. Uh, you can see right here, there's some, um, uh, that's this some Sur Mr. Surfacer 1000. This is really thick primer. I originally brought this to uh, just kind of spray on, but it's way too thick to um, go through an airbrush. Um, since then, I found that it's really good for smelling, uh, filling small um, holes um, such as these in these corners right here. And I think I have one underneath, just tiny holes. Just uh, dabbing a little bit on there and then letting that dry. Uh, it does a good job of filling little holes. Uh, so from here, I'm going to move on to my base color. I'm going to uh, attempt to use this uh, folk art. It's called Crocodile um, 4663 paint. As you can see, it's kind of a, a dark army green or, or military green kind of color. Um, I'm going to try to do that as our base coat. Um, it's always a little tricky using those uh, craft paints. You have to thin them down quite a bit. They're very thick. So to get them to spray on an airbrush, you have to thin them down. And I'm using uh, just some water and a little bit of acrylic thinner to get that done. So I'm going to uh, work on getting this base coat done, and we'll come back and look at it once I get the primer or the uh, green on there. All right, well here's our base coat using the folk art uh, crocodile color. Um, just thin down mostly this water, um, and I'm really pleased with how it came out. Really like the shade of green that's on there. Uh, the paint uh, laid down nicely. I just uh, did some minor coats. The great thing about the bird of prey is that because it's so weathered, the base coat really doesn't have to be perfect. As a matter of fact, it's okay if it has a lot of flaws in it. And now, obviously, we don't want paint dripping and obvious uh, signs of uh, this, uh, paint issues. And we don't have that. I'm really happy with the uh, color, the tone. Um, very pleased with it. Um, now, I just painted it. It's still drying. Once I'm going to give it uh, several hours to hard, kind of harden up and then I'll put a matte coat or a, a satin clear coat on it to protect the paint. Um, it does, we're going to be doing a lot later on so we need to protect that acrylic, make sure it doesn't come off as a view of the uh, bottom. Uh, of course we have a lot of painting to do. We got a, um, I think uh, last time I did this I hand painted the red feathers on the lower part of the wings. I may just try to mask those off. I haven't decided yet. So uh, this is just the very beginning. This is a, a lot of colors, um, one of my favorite kind of ships to do. Lots of weathering, beat up, um, just that really uh, used look to it that I enjoy doing. So again, very happy with the paint. It um, settled down really nicely and covered uh, the ship without too much effort. And I uh, really like the shade. I think it's a good starting point for our bird of prey. All right, here's a little bit of a moment of truth. As you can see, I've painted in the uh, uh, feathers or whatever these are underneath the wings and with some red paint. And I'm about to take off the masking tape so y'all, if uh, anything bled under. Red paint's real bad about bleeding under, so I expect some, hopefully none, but I do. A, won't be surprised. We'll just have to clean it up. Uh, the red paint, I just used this um, Createx or opaque. Uh, you have to thin it down even though it is airbrush paint. It's very thick and uh, it doesn't work well just out of the bottle. So I painted it uh, red obviously and then uh, while the airbrush is still loaded I mixed in just a little bit of some black. If you look closely you see some uh, kind of color variations going on and I try to kind of hit in here with that kind of darker red. I mixed in some black with that red made it a little bit darker and just kind of spray it in a few hours to give us some color modulation. Now I'm going to later go back and apply a wash that's going to seep down in all these uh, lines right here, these um, panel lines, and, and so it'll break up and give us some uh, separation. So save a lot of time than trying to hand paint or mask off these individually, and we'll still get a good effect. So let's see what we have here.
be good. All right, I think that turned out really well. Um, maybe just a little bit of bleed right in here, nothing major, that'll clean up pretty easy. Um, I did put on a clear satin coat. As you can see, there's a little bit of a sheen now on our paint. I put in a clear satin uh, coat to protect this paint. And you know, as we move on to other paints, you want some kind of protecting because just in this case where I kind of I need to wipe that off, I don't want to be wiping off the green too. So uh, that side's looking pretty good. I'll go ahead and see if we can get this off. Yeah, I see a little bleed right there where it's kind of in between a gap and the tape. But that should not be hard to take it off, especially since this paint was only applied about 20 minutes ago. Alright, so for the most part, some nice clean lines. We'll get that a little bit in a second. And just a little bit, we found a gap in the tape. I'm telling you, red paint will always do that. Uh, it looks like it kind of goes up in there. I'm not too worried about that. It's going to be underneath. And we still have a lot of weathering to do. So, get that up. Well, really shouldn't be picking that out with my fingernail. But, there we go. Uh, like it. Pretty happy with how that's looking. And again, we'll, we'll do some more uh, weathering to that. We'll do some washes to bring out those uh, panel lines and get some separation of the, the uh, different panels in there. But overall, that didn't take very long, and I'm really pleased with the look. I'm glad I uh, gave it some darker colors. I think it's going to look really nice. All right, just working on uh, some of the detail painting. Still a lot to go, but I wanted to kind of stop where I was at to show you what I'm doing here. Now, I did lighten up the uh, green. When I put that clear satin coat on it, it darkened it up quite a bit. So I went back over with some of this... Um, uh, DE Green um, model layer from Vallejo and kind of airbrushed it um, not like full cover I wanted to leave some of the dark in the <clears throat> excuse me in the edges I did have a little bit of accident I didn't have the cover on my uh, airbrush pot and I poured some paint on here uh, it actually dipped out as I was kind of spraying through so I had to like re-sand and get all the paint that gooped up all in there and then repaint it um, I had a little bit of an accident on that, but I uh, cleaned it up and it looks fine now. But uh, this, uh, with some of these odd, uh, odds and end colors, uh, here's some sick green from Game Air that I kind of used on here. Very thin, almost a glaze type. I mixed in some grays and blues to kind of get some uh, off colors. Um, I'm looking at pictures of the studio model, but I'm not going to try to follow that 100% more. Just kind of get an idea of what I want to do. Um, here you can see it's, uh, some of the bottom painting and what I'm doing on there. So uh, just a lot more uh, detail painting to go. A little bit on the front edge there. And uh, yeah, so I'm going to be working on that. And uh, once we get all the detail painting, we'll put a clear coat and then we can start the weathering process. But I think it's looking pretty good. Pretty happy with how it um, is looking right now. Uh, the weathering will bring everything together and give it that really uh, kind of bird of prey beat up look. All right, I finished with most of my detailed paint, as you can see on here, just a variety of different colors. I've added on the um, this rust color part and glued that on. You can see there, I like how that uh, kind of breaks up the green, gives you a little bit of contrast. I did some dry brushing with some, uh, so I think it was... Uh, Aluminum, Vallejo Aluminum, um, to kind of start giving these uh, these paint these panels right here where the wings fall in some a uh, little bit more color to them. And I did some dry brushing on the uh, guns; they were like a dark gray. And uh, different areas, I did a little bit of dry brushing just to bring out the detail. And once that was done, I put a clear coat on it using this Carlon Fusion Flat Clear. Uh, this is probably one of my favorite um, uh, flat clear coats that you can get. Uh, it comes out in really fine mist and, and does a good job of um, giving it that flat coat. It is a little bit more expensive than some of the other kind of big cans. Uh, I think it was around 8 bucks for this can. But it does a good job and um, it's a nice size 
uh, very comparable to like the modeling type flat, gear, um, flat coats that you get in cans like testers and um, to me and stuff like that. So from here, I'm going to be weathering it. And I'll probably start off with some uh, uh, panel line accent color and some of these, uh, I don't know if these are windows. I guess they kind of look like windows. But anyway, we're going to put some uh, accent color in those. We're going to make some washes. I'll probably do a variety of some very uh, watered down paints like this uh, terracotta and um, uh, this is kind of a charcoal color and um, I'll do it in layers uh, very watered down very thin and um, but it should start bringing out some really nice detail and getting it that really beat up look I may come in do a little bit more of a painting here and there uh, but that's going to be my first and now that I think about it before I proceed on that I need to there's just a few decals or some that kind of go right here and I believe some uh, Klingon emblems that go on the edges there so I need to do that first I need to put those decals on because we want those decals getting the weathering process too and I'll do that real quick and once I get the decals on and they set um, we'll get another flat coat on top of the decals to protect them so that will take a little time just to let that set up and then we'll move into the weathering All right, we're, here's what it looks like after doing just one wash. And that is just a, a dark gray acrylic craft paint uh, watered down quite a bit. And uh, I put it on, give it about 20 minutes to kind of dry into the crevices, come back over, and you can use some acrylic thinner, water. Uh, if it's something that's really stuck on there, uh, some diluted um, alcohol will help get it off. Just got to be real careful because the alcohol will actually strip off all the paint. So but I had some places where it wasn't wanting to come off. Um, some of the wash was uh, really dried on and the, uh, just used some diluted alcohol to get that off. Again, be very careful with that. But really liking how this is looking now, that wash really starts to uh, give it that worn in used look uh, that I love so much. And uh, I think it's really looking good. Now from here, uh, you could stop from here. You could clear coat it and call it done. Um, but from here, I'm going to probably do another light wash, probably not the whole thing. With some of that burnt sienna maybe some browns just to kind of give it some tone some uh, rust kind of look going on in different places we'll do that we'll probably put another clear coat on it i say we i will probably put another clear coat on it and then i'll get into doing some dry pastel work uh, to darken in maybe some oil paints to do some specific um, rust effects on it but again looking really good um, happy how it's turning out I did uh, open up, uh, remove the uh, the mask all that I had in here. Uh, I wouldn't recommend this particular kind. Again, that was uh, this micro mask. It was just, I've had issues with it before. It's just very difficult to get off. I had to scrape it. Uh, unfortunately, uh, this isn't a clear part that I have to like see through uh, because I had to really scrape it with some uh, tweezers and stuff to get that removed and I think there's still some kind of caught in the corner. Uh, I've used other latex stuff before that did not grip like this does. This just grips way too strong onto the plastic and it was really difficult to get off. So I probably won't be using that anymore, at least on uh, not these kind of applications. So anyway, um, that's where we're at and I'm uh, just kind of moving along and I'll show you uh, once we get the uh, other rust effects on and uh, where we go from there. All right, I've uh, completed most of my weathering here. I have uh, went in with some more washes with some of that burnt sienna and some browns. As you can see, we're getting a little bit of some colors going on here, which I like a lot. I did a little bit of uh, oil paint weathering, just taking some regular like craft oil paints, using some enamel thinner to thin it down. It makes like a, a, like a pen wash and you can get into different areas. So I did a little bit of that throughout. Did uh, some... Um, pen line wash from uh, the Tamiya to kind of detail our guns a little bit. 
And uh, from here, I need to connect the rest of the parts. We've got the clear parts, the front torpedo launcher, the engine part. We've got to connect the tube that runs through here. And um, there's a few more fiber optics I need to put in. Um, hopefully it'll light up. I'm going to put one here, here, and a couple other places. So I need to do all that, and then I'm going to attach it to um, this base. And uh, when I come back, we'll look at the finished model. All right, well, here's our finished uh, vertebrae model from AMT. I uh, Finishing touches were one, I had to fill in these windows. I used a little bit of this Zap canopy glue, and I just took a toothpick and took some of the glue and kind of filled it in there. Then used a Q-tip to kind of wipe away the excess. It dries crystal clear. I um, did add in a little bit of red paint on some of these lower windows on the front section here. I took some fiber optics um, and painted them red, and I have one here, here, and then under, underneath is one. I've also, I don't know how canon this is, but these two um, like ports right here, I drilled those out and also filled those in, so there's a little bit of red glow coming from those. I'll turn the lights on in just a second. Uh, just finished up the weathering, I added in a um, flat clear coat to protect all the weathering. Um, trying to just Get a good variation on the colors and paint, get a warm beat up look. Um, had a little bit of a uh, gap right here that I just sealed in with some dark paint and then weathered over. Um, so you couldn't, it was just kind of glowing red a little bit. So I had to uh, fix that. I do have a little bit of light bleed down. It's in a spot that I really can't get to. It's uh, where the two parts of the hole kind of met and you had that midsection and it kind of glows a little red. It's not terrible, but um, this if you go to do this model and light the engines, this, uh, you're going to need to light block that as well. But overall, I'm very happy, uh, uh, especially with the paint job. I think that came out good. Um, it's powered by a 12 volt LED light strip um, power supply. And I have a little on off switch here. So we'll cut it on. And you can uh, see the windows here. You can see the lower window here kind of glows red. Of course, we have our windows in this upper section here. We have our uh, lights coming off our wings. I'm happy how those turned out. I thought those turned out pretty good. Uh, we have the lighting for our torpedo launcher. I thought that turned out pretty good. If you look underneath, we have the lighting. Let's see if I can get a closer look at this. Uh, we have our lighting coming off this under section here. There's a little uh, fiber optic, red fiber optic coming off that right there. And of course we have our engine lighting. And overall I'm pretty happy. I know it's not um, accurate to the uh, uh, filming model, but it still looks pretty good. I like the nice glow that it has coming off of it. If you look down there you can see a little bit of that light bleed that I was talking about. It's kind of, there it is right there. So not too bad. Um, the window lights do appear to be a little bright, um, but not much I can do about it this time. So that's something to think about, just checking how bright those windows light, lights are. Of course we have the lights here. I don't know if I showed you the kind of the, the glow. It's not too bad, it comes off there, not too much, just a little bit. And that's it. I hope you've enjoyed the build. I'm uh, pretty pleased how it came out. Until next time, everybody have a good one.